based on this numerical you know they can also ask you to calculate the molecular mass atomic number is nothing but a number of proton whereas mass number which is nothing but a number of proton plus number of neutron so according to the voice law we know that if temperature kept constant the volume of the gas is inversely proportional to the pressure homogeneous equilibrium is the one in which all the species both the reactant and the product should be present in same phase then only we can say it is homogeneous equilibrium hello my dear students a warm welcome you all myself is purnima lecturer in department of chemistry at vidyashram pre university college temple of excellence mysore my dear students in our last discussion we were dealing with the model question paper which has been released from the pre university board so in our last session we have discussed with how to answer with a one mark two mark and a three mark question today we will go with the part d let's see how the question will be raised and how to answer for five mark question let us understand okay so in the part d as we all know that which carries five marks okay so again in the part d there are 10 questions will be there okay so i am talking about only the part d that is in fourth main okay in fourth main there are 10 questions will be given under that you need to attend any five so each questions will carries five marks so five to five which carries 25 marks so i'll go with the question now write any three postulates of dalton's theory and calculate the molecular mass of carbon dioxide so please understand this is a question for 3 plus 2 weightage this is a question for 3 plus 2 weightage and for the first question you need to write the three postulates of dalton theory and for the second questions which carries two marks you need to calculate the molecular mass let's see how to answer for the first question so this is a question from the unit 1 some basic concepts of chemistry so hope you all familiar with the dalton theory he says that the matter consists of individual atoms and the atoms of the given element which always have a identical mass and identical properties identical mass and identical property and compounds are always formed by the combinations of the atoms of the same elements or atoms of the different element in a fixed ratio in a fixed ratio and he says that during a chemical reaction rearrangement of the atoms which is taking place or reorganizations of the atom which is taking place within the molecule and finally he gave a statement that the matter neither be created or nor be destroyed matter neither be created or nor be destroyed so any three if you know the proper postulate you can put it for the dalton's theory okay so which was given by dalton so hope you all understood that what all the postulates has to write for the dalton's theory what does the dalton's theory states that the dalton's theory says that the matter neither be created nor be destroyed he says that the matter which consists of individual atom and the atoms of the given elements will have a identical mass and identical property and during the chemical reactions the rearrangement or reorganizations of the atoms is taking place and he says that finally that compounds are always formed by atoms of the same elements or atoms of the different elements are when they are combined in fixed ratio leads into the formation of what compounds okay any three postulate you have to write then coming into the second question that is the calculation of 
molecular mass for the given compound here they have given the carbon dioxide so how do you calculate the molecular mass by adding the atomic masses of the each element so in the carbon dioxide we know that there are two elements will be there one is carbon one is oxygen just by adding the atomic mass of carbon and 2 into atomic mass of oxygen why it is true because there are two oxygen will be there so it is atomic mass of carbon plus atomic mass of oxygen into 2 so it is atomic mass of carbon is 12 plus 2 into atomic mass of oxygen it is 16 so how much you will get it 44 so it is a 44 gram per mole which is the molecular mass of the carbon dioxide okay just by adding the atomic masses we can easily calculate the molecular masses so if you attain the first question you will get a three marks if you attain the another one which is a sub question you will get a two marks so total weightage of this question is five okay next coming into the numerical the percentage composition of organic compound found to be contain 26.66% of carbon and 2.22% of hydrogen and rest is oxygen. If the molecular mass of the compound is 90 gram per mole, determine the molecular formula of the compound. In the bracket, they have given that atomic masses of the carbon, hydrogen and oxygen are 12, 1 and 16 respectively. So, this is a question from the unit 1, again from the some basic concepts of chemistry. This is a numerical to calculate the empirical formula and the molecular formula. How to calculate? First of all, we must understand from the numerical that which are all the element which has been given. So, from the numerical we have confirmed that they have given the carbon, hydrogen and the oxygen. This is a table that you have to write. Okay. Then coming into their percentage. Percentage also it is given. For carbon it is 26.66. For the hydrogen it is 2.22. For oxygen it is 71.12. Right. And also in the bracket they have given the atomic masses of these element. So, for the carbon it is 12 and for hydrogen we know that it is 1 for the oxygen it is 16 now after writing this given data we need to calculate the relative number of moles and the simple ratio so how to calculate this relative number of moles just by dividing the percentage with the atomic masses so i can show you here 26.66 divided by atomic mass of carbon it is 12 how much you will get 2.22 this is a relative number for carbon similarly for hydrogen what is the percentage they have given 2.22 divided by 1 again it is 2.22 for oxygen how much they have given 71.12 divided by what is the atomic mass of oxygen 16 you will get 4.44 so this is how the relative number of moles will be calculated just by dividing the percentage by atomic mass so you will get this number 2.22 2.22 .22 and 4.11 so, after getting this relative number of moles, we need to calculate the, we need to make the simple ratio. How to make the simple ratio? By looking at this number, you can clearly say that the smaller one is 2.22, right? Among these three values, the smaller value is 2.22. Just divide the smaller value with all this number, you will get this ratio. I can show you that. From all these three numbers, the smaller one is 2.22. I will divide the first moles by 2.22. You will get the ratio of 1. Similarly, second one, 2.22, you will get 1. And the last one, 
divided by 2.22 you will get a 2. So, you will get a ratio of 1, 1 and 2. So, hope you all understood. So, what you have to write? First, make a column. First, write the given element in the numerical. Then, write the percentage. Please write the atomic number. Afterwards, go with the relative number of moles calculation. How do you calculate the relative moles? Just by dividing the percentage by atomic mass. You can write it here also. Percentage by atomic mass. Okay, percentage by atomic mass, you will get the relative number of moles. Afterwards, go with the simple ratio. By looking at this value, you yourself that you have to decide that which number is least. Then divide that least number with the number which we have obtained, you will get a simple ratio. After obtaining that simple ratio, you can clearly say that there are only one carbon only one hydrogen, two oxygen will be there. So, write the empirical formula of this compound that is CHO2, CHO2 or C1H1O2 you can write. Afterwards, calculate the molecular mass of this empirical formula. So, what is the molecular formula? How do you calculate? Just by adding the atomic numbers. So, it is 12 for carbon plus 1 for oxygen plus 2 into 16 for oxygen. So, you will get a 45 for the empirical formula as we obtained by the numericals. Afterwards, you can see that in the problem itself, they have given the molecular mass of the compound as 90 gram per mole, right? So, to obtain the values of N, we have a relationship that is N is equal to molecular mass divided by empirical mass. We know that molecular mass of the compound is 90 divided by 45 as we have calculated from the empirical formula. So, if you divide 90 divided by 45, you will get a 2. Now, you multiply this 2 with the empirical formula as we have obtained, you will get CHO2 into 2. So, how do you multiply? You have to multiply 2 with the alphabets. So, C2H2O4. C2H2O4 and this is known as oxalic acid or ethanoic acid. Okay. This is how if you perform this the entire numer numerical and it is one of the easiest one because the data will be given. Only thing is you need to step up with a small calculation. Okay. If you done this, you will get a 3 marks. You will get a 3 marks. So, hope you are understood. Sometime based on this numerical, you know, they can also ask you to calculate the molecular mass. Okay. So, sometime it will be asked for 4 marks also. It depends upon the exam in the question paper setup. Coming into the part B, that is in the same second question. State the Avogadro law and what is the value of Avogadro number? So, as we have already know that Avogadro was a scientist. He says that the art the temperature and the pressure, if you kept con constant, temperature and the pressure kept constant, the equal volume of the gases is always equal to the number of moles of the molecules. Num equal number of molecules, you can say. So, by keeping the temperature and the pressure constant, he says that the volume of the gas is directly proportional to the number of moles of the gases. So, what is the value of Avogadro number? We know that it is equal to 6.022 into the 10 raised to the power of 23. Okay. This is how you need to go with the 5 mark question in the part D. Hope you all understood with this. Next question. The FM station of All India Radio Hassan broadcasts on a 
frequency of 1020 kilohertz calculate the wavelength of electromagnetic radiation emitted by the transmitter and we have one more question write the red work equation and explain the terms so here also my dear students the first question will carry three marks and second question will carry two marks so totally we can get five marks by solving this numerical so in the first question we need to calculate the wavelength of the radiation electromagnetic radiation by taking up the frequency so we all know that how to calculate the wavelength so before that we need to convert this frequency kilohertz into hertz later into per second how to convert this we know that they have given 1020 kilohertz Kilohertz will be converted into hertz by multiplying with the thousand. You will get 1020000 hertz. Again, for the per second also, we can calculate it. Once we got the frequency from the numerical, it is very easy to calculate the wavelength because we had a relationship with the wavelength along with the frequency. That is, lambda is equal to C divided by V. So, here, C is nothing but a velocity of light and V is nothing but a frequency. So, here, so we know that C value is constant which is always equal to 3 into 10 raised to the power of 8. And we know that V which is nothing but a 1020 per second, 1020 per second. And if you substitute this value to the lambda, you will get 3 into 10 raised to the power of 8 divided by 102000. If you solve this, you will get the lambda values as 294 meter. This is how if the wavelength is asked you to calculate, see that what is the frequency, whether it has to convert it into kilohertz or to the hertz, we need to identify it first, then we need to calculate the wave. Okay. If you solve this, you will get a 3 marks. Next, we have one more question. We need to write the Rydberg equation and also we need to explain the terms which is involved in it. We know that Rydberg equation which is nothing but a 1 divided by lambda into r into minus 1 divided by n1 square minus 1 divided by n2 square. So, what is the lambda? Again, it is a wavelength and r represents a Rydberg constant and here the n1 and n2 represent quantum number of initial state and quantum number of final state. Just for writing this, you know, you will get a 1 mark and explaining the terms which is involved in that equation, you will get a 1 mark. So, totally you can easily get 2 marks by writing Rydberg equation and explaining the or just naming the terms which is involved in it. Hope you are understood with this question. We will go with the next question. Write all the possible values of L, M and S when N equals 3 in an atom. So, in this question, we need to write the possible value for L, M and S. Okay. When N equals 3, we need to write the possible values for L, M and S. How to write? We all know that if N equals to 3, L which is equal to 0, 1 and 2. The M value which also we write from 0, 1, 2. And from the next to the 0, it is minus 1 and minus 2. This is a m value if n equals 3. Similarly, the s value which is always represents the spin of the orbital. It is minus half and plus half. Okay. This is how we will calculate the or we will write the l, m and s value if the number of n which is given. Okay. Suppose if n value is 4, 
How do you write the M L value? L value will be 0, 1, 2 and 3. Okay. Similarly, the M value which is also written as 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. Then minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Similarly, the S value will be plus half and minus half. This is how if the N value which is given, we need to calculate the M, L and S value. Coming into the second question, the atomic number Z and the mass number of the element are 29 and 64. How many protons and neutrons are there in it? So in this numerical, again, we need to calculate the number of protons and neutrons are present in a molecule. We know that atomic number, which is nothing but what? Number of proton. Number of proton. 29. Coming into the second one, that is mass number they have given, right? Mass number, which is always equal to the number of proton minus number of neutron. What is the number of proton here? So they have given 29. So we need to calculate the number of neutron, right? Yes. So what is the mass number they have given? 64. Now if you subtract 64 with a 29, you will get 35. So this is a Number of neutron which is present. Number of neutron. So the neutron number is 35 and number of proton is 23. Just understand that what is atomic number and mass number. Atomic number is nothing but a number of proton. Whereas mass number which is nothing but a number of proton plus number of neutron. So number of proton we know, number of neutron we need to calculate, but we also know the mass number. Just by subtracting the mass number with the number of proton, we will get the number of neutron. So hope you all understood with this numerical. Again, it is one of the easiest question when you can easily get 5 marks from this question because the first question will carry 3 marks and the second question will carry 2 marks. Okay. For writing this number of proton, you will get a 1 mark. Okay, for writing this, you know, again you will get a 1 max neutron. Coming into the next question, derive ideal gas equation and name the two types of forces which determine the physical state of a substance. Okay, so again this is a question for the 5 marks and for the first question it will carry 3 marks, for second question it is 2 marks. So, for deriving the ideal equation, we must have an idea about the Boyle's law, Charles' law and Avogadro's law, right? So, according to the Boyle's law, we know that if temperature kept constant, the volume of the gas is inversely proportional to the pressure, okay? That is why I have considered the Boyle's law. Then coming into the Charles' law, by considering the pressure at constant, the volume of the gas which is directly proportional to the temperature. Coming into the Avogadro law by considering the temperature and the pressure is constant, the volume of the gas is directly proportional to the number of moles of the gases. Just by combining all the three gas law, we obtain that V, that is volume, which is directly proportional to the T divided by T into N divided by P. So, this is a thing that we are obtained or we got an equation by combining all the three gas law. So, what are the gas law first says that the volume which is directly pro inversely proportional to the pressure and second Charles law state that volume which is directly proportional to the temperature and Avogadro law says that the volume which is directly proportional to the number of moles. Just by combining all this three law, we can say that volume which is directly proportional to the T into N divided by P. Just to remove that proportionality constant, okay, we can directly put the R here just because R is a 
gas constant. So we can write V is directly proportional to the nRT divided by P, where R is a gas constant, N is the number of moles of gas, T is the temperature, P is the pressure, V is the volume of gas. Just by doing the cross multiplication, you can say that PV is equal to nRT or this entire equation can also be written as V which is equal to nRT by P. Just by doing the cross multiplication, you will obtain PV is equal to nRT. So, for writing this equation, you will get a 1 mark. Writing for this equation, you will get a 1 mark. And writing the final equation, you will get a 1 mark. So, it carries 3 marks. Then coming to the second question, name the two types of forces which determine the physical state of a substance. We know that the physical state of the substance can also be determined by the intermolecular forces and also by thermal energy. These two are the forces which are mainly responsible for physical state of the substance. Next question, write any three postulates of kinetic theory of gases. And second question is, define the saturated vapor pressure of a liquid and how does it vary with the temperature. Again, this is a question for 5 marks. First question will carry 3 marks. Second question will carry 2 marks. Okay. So, in the first question, you need to write the 3 postulates of kinetic theory of gases that is in the unit 5, the states of matter. Okay. Hope you know that what is the kinetic theory and what are all the easiest one you know the postulate. You can write it here. Each postulate will carry one one marks. You can easily get three marks here. Okay. So, the first postulate says that the gases which consist of minute particles, they are known as what? Molecules. And the molecules of the gases are moving all direction in a straight line. The directions of the molecules are always alter when the two molecules are collide with each other or when they hit on the walls of the container. Which indicates that suppose if you take a container, okay, this is a closed container. So, what is the first postulate says that the gas which consists of what? Minute particles, they are known as what? Molecules. These are nothing but what? Molecules. And the second postulate says that the molecules are always moves in a straight line, but their direction of the movement will be get changed when the two or more molecules are collide with each other or when they hit on the walls of the container, you know, the directions of the movement will be get changed. And the third postulate says that the collision which is perfectly elastic, which means that during the collision of the gas molecule, there is no loss or gain of the energy which is taking place. That is why they say that the collision between the molecules are perfectly elastic. They are perfectly elastic. For writing the three proper postulate, you will get a three marks. Coming to the next question, define saturated vapor pressure of a liquid and how does it vary with the temperature. We need to define what is the saturated vapor pressure first and we have to say that what does, how does it vary with the temperature. So, we know that the pressure which is exerted by the vapor above the liquid surface, above the liquid surface, which is equilibrium with the liquid that is known as vapor pressure. Okay. What is the vapor pressure? The pressure exerted by the vapor above the liquid surface that is said to be vapor pressure and this vapor pressure always increases with increasing in temperature. Saturated vapor pressure is the one and the same. Vapor pressure means it is the pressure exerted by the vapors on the surface of the liquid. Okay. That is known as what? Vapor pressure. Hope you all understood in the 
Rolle's law that is suppose if I get the non-volatile solution in a closed container what will happen we know that non-volatile solution will be easily get evaporated is it right easily get evaporated when they are get evaporated if I kept in a closed container when it is get evaporating it goes and touches on the surface of the glass and again it will be combined to the virginal state when this vapors are evaporating and uh, once it is cooled down and when it is coming back it exerts some pressure on the liquid that pressure we call it as what vapor pressure suppose if you increase the temperature here the vapor pressure will be also get increased why the vapor pressure will begin increase because if you increase the temperature the molecules can easily get evaporated so when it is cooled down it can also exert the pressure on the liquid so as you increase the temperature the vapor pressure is also get increased okay this is how you need to understand this and you have to write a proper statement and how does it varies with the temperature that you must write for writing the vapor pressure you will get a one mark how does it vary with the temperature if you write for that you will get a one mark next question will be goes like this derive the relationship between cp and cv for the ideal gas and waters and entropy give its assigned unit so here this is a question from the thermodynamics again which carries five marks the first question will carries three marks second question will carries two marks okay so how to derive the cp and cv we'll discuss first so we know that for obtaining the relationship between the cp and cv we must have a relationship with the change in enthalpy with the change in internal energy of the system okay so that will be given by delta h which is equal to delta u plus p delta v or delta pv you can say so delta h which is nothing but a change in enthalpy delta v u is nothing but a change in internal energy of a system and delta pv which is nothing but a change in pressure and volume of the system okay now if you consider delta h i'll write as such delta u also as such the delta pv can also be written as delta rt because from the ideal gas we have understood that pv is equal to nrt when n is equal to 1 pv will be become rt so that is why instead of writing the pv i can write delta rt here so delta rt i have substituted it instead of writing p so i can rearrange delta in between rt so the equation will become delta h which is equal to delta u plus r delta t we know that delta h which is nothing but a change in enthalpy will be equal to cp delta t which is equal to change in internal energy of a system will be equal to change in volume that is into delta t plus r delta t if you see this reaction cp and cv are common and delta t is also same so i'll take out the cv and delta t outside so equation will become cp delta t minus cv into delta t which is equal to r delta t if you look at this equation the delta t is common i'll take out the delta t outside cp minus cv into delta t which is equal to r delta t now if you cancel delta t and delta t cp minus cv will be become r okay this is how we need to derive an equation for cp and cv hope you all understood with this and coming into the entropy we know that entropy is nothing but a degree of randomness of the system and the si unit will be joules per kelvin per mole okay so writing the correct definition for entropy you'll get a one mark for writing the si unit you'll get a one mark so which carries how much two marks for this also it is 
3 marks. Hope you all understood with this. We will go with the next question. Calculate the standard enthalpy of formation of the liquid benzene. The given enthalpy of combustion of carbon, hydrogen and benzene are minus 393.5 kilojoules, minus 285.83 kilojoules and minus 320, 3267.0 kilojoules respectively. And this is the equation they have given that is carbon plus hydrogen given is to the benzene. We need to calculate the delta H. Okay. Next, coming into the given data. Okay. The carbon combines with oxygen. We know that it gives rise to the carbon dioxide. When hydrogen combines with oxygen, it gives rise to the water molecule. Similarly, when benzene combines with the oxygen, it gives rise to the carbon dioxide with the water molecule. And the same enthalpies of combustion I have written, that is delta H, which is equal to minus 393.5 kilojoules and delta H is equal to minus 285.83 kilojoules and delta H, which is equal to minus 3267.0 kilojoules. And second question is, what is a spontaneous change given example? So here for solving this numerical you will get a 3 marks and for writing what is a spontaneous change within one example you will get a 2 marks. Let's see how to solve with this numerical. First reaction they have given the enthalpies that is enthalpy of combustion for the each reaction they have given. That is carbon dioxide when it is reacting with the water molecule it gives rise to the benzene with the oxygen and carbon with the oxygen which forms a carbon dioxide. Hydrogen when it is combines with the oxygen it forms a water molecule. Now if you look at this reaction you can cancel it 6 carbon dioxide 6 carbon dioxide then coming into the 6 oxygen and uh, 3 by 2 oxygen which is nothing but a uh, 15 by 2 oxygen. Now if you write this reaction 6 carbon plus 3 hydrogen okay so again you can cancel 3 water molecule with the 3 water molecule also the remaining is C6S6 and the delta value will become 48.51 kilojoules so the entire reactions will be also given understand just by subtracting this values you know with the delta H you will get 48.51 kilojoules and again it is one of the easiest question but you need to rearrange the equation to cancel it with the equivalents. Then coming into the second question you need to state what is a spontaneous change. We already know that spontaneous change it is nothing but a changes which is takes place of its own without any external aid if any changes which is taking place of its own that is said to be a spontaneous change example melting of ice okay that is known as spontaneous changes coming into the next question state lee chatelier's principle what is the effect of temperature on the equilibrium when forward reaction is exothermic and what is a homogeneous equilibrium? I give an example. So, in the first question, you need to say or you need to state the Lee Chatelier's principle, and you must say that what is the effect of temperature on the equilibrium if the reactions are going in a forward direction. Okay. So, for writing the correct answer for the first question, which carries three marks, and for second question, you will get a Two marks. What is the Lee Chatelier's principle states that according to it, it states that the changes in temperature, pressure, or volume or in the concentration of a system will result in predictable or oppositing changes in a system in order to achieve the new equilibrium state. So, what is the Lee Chatelier's principle states that? If any changes may be in the pressure, volume or concentration, oppositely something which is going to be changed within the system to exit a new equilibrium. That is a Lee-Chatelier's principle. 
for writing this correct statement you will get a 2 mark and in that question also we need to write what is the effect of temperature. For an exothermic reaction we know that the heat is product and therefore the increase of temperature will shift the equilibrium to the left and while decreasing in the temperature it will shift the equilibrium to the right. This is the effect of temperature when the reactions are in the forward direction. So during the exothermic reaction the heat one is only the product right. So heat will be get liberated. So that what will happen if the temperature if you rise the equilibrium will be shift to the left. If you decrease the temperature equilibrium will be shift to the right. So for writing this you know you will get a 1 marks total you will get a 3 marks. Coming into the next question homogeneous equilibrium in the sense in a system Suppose if all the reactant and the products are present in the same phase, then we say it is homogeneous equilibrium. Homogeneous equilibrium is the one in which all the species, both the reactant and the product should be present in same phase. Then only we can say it is homogeneous equilibrium. You can say here, this is a Haber's process where the nitrogen reacting with the hydrogen to form ammonia. Nitrogen and hydrogen both are gases, even ammonia is also gases. Both the reactants and the products are present in the same phase. Hence, it is an example for the homogeneous equilibrium. For writing the correct statement, you will get a 2 marks and writing one example, you will get a 1 mark. Next, write any 3 applications of equilibrium constant and in aqueous solution of ammonium chloride is acidic give reason. So in this question for the first one we need to write the applications of equilibrium constant. We all know that equilibrium constant that we used to predict for the extent of reaction to predict the direction of the reaction or to calculate the equilibrium concentration we use the equilibrium constant. Okay. The first one is to know about the extent of reaction, to know about the direction of the reaction or to know about the equilibrium concentration. Okay. Just write the three uses or three applications of equilibrium constant. You will get a three marks. Then coming into the second question that is aqueous solution of ammonium chloride is acidic. Why we need to state the reason? We know that ammonium chloride is a salt, right? And salt of strong acid, the hydrochloric acid is a weak base, right? So, ammonium chloride is a salt of strong acid, okay? Coming into the hydrochloric acid, if you compare, you know, it is a weak base. A weak base of ammonium hydroxide, so an aqueous solution of ammonium chloride is acidic in nature. So why it is acidic in nature? Because it is a salt of strong acid. How does this strong acid will be obtained? By dissolving the ammonium hydroxide with the HCl. That is why it behaves as a strong acid or acidic in nature. Hope you all understood with this and for writing the correct statement for this you will get a 2 marks. Coming into the next question, prove that pH plus pOH which is equal to 40 and next question is explain the common ion effect with an example. Here again this is the question from the equilibria. You need to understand how to derive the pH and pOH relationship with the 40. We all know that the H plus ion and OH minus which is always equal to 10 raised to the power of minus 14. If you take the negative logarithm on both sides, log of H plus into log of OH minus ion which is equal to log of 10 raised to the power of 14 which also be written as log into H plus plus log of OH minus 
the raise to the power will comes down so it is log a to the power of b can also be written as b into log a right so it is minus 14 into log 10 and here also you can understand that log of h plus into log of oh minus which is nothing but a log of a into log of b log of a and log of b which is nothing but a log of a plus log of b okay that is why i have written log of h plus plus log of oh minus ions which is equal to 14 minus 14 into log of 10 we know that log 10 which is nothing but a 1 and log of H plus ions which is nothing but a potential of hydrogen and log of OH minus ions which is nothing but a potential of OH. So log of 10 which is nothing but a 1, 1 into 14 which is nothing but a 14. So this is a relationship you need to prove that pH plus pOH which is equal to 14. Again this is one of the easiest question where you are going to prove the pH and pOH just by considering the negative logs on both the side. So for writing this you know you will get a 3 marks and we have one more question to explain with the common ion effect by taking with one example. According to the Lee Chatelier's principle if you consider if we increase the concentration of the any ions in the solution it combines with the ions of opposite charges so that salt will be get precipitated. For example, when HCl is passed through the saturated solution of sodium chloride, the Cl minus ion concentration will be increased, right? If you take the HCl gas, if you pass through the sodium chloride solution, the Cl minus ion concentration will be increased so that it will combine with Na plus of NaCl and forms a precipitate of NaCl. So, what does it happen if NaCl solution is there, okay, if you pass the HCl gas to this, here the Cl minus concentration will be get increased so that this negatively charged Cl minus can attack with the opposite charges of the sodium and forms a sodium chloride which is a precipitate. Later the precipitate will be released into the formation of salt. This is known as what? Common ion effect. So just state that what is the common ion effect by taking with one example. Next in the part D we are going for the fifth main. Again in the fifth main already I told you that there are four questions will be there. You need to answer only two questions. Each question will carry 5 marks. 2 5 are 10. Okay. So the first question will be goes like this. How can carbon and hydrogen is estimated in organic compound by Leibniz processes? Define functional group and write the structure and functional groups of carboxylic acid. So for the first question again it carries 3 marks. For the second question it carries 2 marks. So for the first question just write the principle and write the calculation part no need of writing the procedure because it is only for three marks so what does this principle state for this estimation of carbon and hydrogen we know that the mass of the organic compound containing carbon and hydrogen is heated with a pure and dry oxygen and with copper oxide the carbon will be becomes carbon dioxide Hydrogen will become water molecule from the mass of carbon dioxide and water molecule. The percentage of the carbon and percentage of the hydrogen will be estimated. We have calculation for this that is mass of the given compound will be taken as W gram. In that you are going to estimate the percentage of carbon and percentage of hydrogen. How to calculate that? We know that. The increase in mass of U2 which is equal to mass of the water which is as a X graph. Then 18 grams of water consists of 2 moles of hydrogen. This is a statement as we know. So that X gram of water which contains 2X divided by 15 grams of hydrogen. 
So, the percentage of the hydrogen will become mass of hydrogen into 100 divided by mass of organic compound. Now, if you calculate, the percentage of the hydrogen will become 2 into x divided by 18 into 100 divided by W. If you increase the mass of potash bulb that lead into the mass of carbon dioxide which will become y gram that can be calculated with this equation that is 44 grams of carbon dioxide contains 12 grams of carbon and y grams of carbon dioxide which contains 12 grams of y gram 12 y divided by 44 grams of carbon. Now if you substitute the percentage of the carbon will become 12 y divided by 44 into 100 into w. This is the a calculation part you need to write. For writing this, you will get a 2 marks. For writing the principle, you will get a 1 mark. I will go with the next question that is, what is the functional group? And we need to write structure of functional groups of carboxylic acid. So, we all know that functional groups are nothing but the atoms of the group of atom or a reactive site in organic compound which are responsible for giving the characteristics property to the compound and functional group for the carboxylic acid is R C O O H and this can be written as R C O O H okay this is a functional group for carboxylic acid coming to the next question what are carbocation mention the hybridization state of carbon and the shape of CH3 plus that is methyl carbocation. How do you detect the sulfur by sodium fusion extract? So, in the first question, you need to say what are carbocations. Carbocations are nothing but a ions which are containing positively charged carbon center. For example, in the methane, if you consider the carbon will have the four valence bond with the hydrogen. Suppose if you remove one of the hydrogen, the carbon will get a positive charge at the center. This positively charged carbon atoms are also known as what? Carbocation. The ion which contains positively charged carbon center which is obtained by heterolytic breakage of covalent bond and the hybridization state of carbon in the CH3 is sp3 and it has a planar shape respectively. So, if you see that you know the CH3 is a carbocation when you are going to break a bond the carbon with hydrogen. Okay. Then coming into the second question how do you identify or how do you detect the sulfur by sodium fusion extract. We know that sodium fusion extract will be treated with sodium nitropurecide, you will get a violet color appearance. When sodium fusion extent, if it is treated with sodium nitropurecide, you will get a violet color. This indicates the presence of sulfur on the organic compound. So, reaction will be goes like this. This is a sodium fusion extent reacting with sodium nitropurecide. It will give rise to the violet color. That is mainly because the sodium are reacting with this sodium furicide to form a sodium furicide with the sulfate. So, this is how the given compound if consists of sulfur that can be easily detected. For writing the first question, you will get a 3 marks. For writing the second one, you will get a 2 marks. Coming into the next question, that is explain the mechanism of chlorination of methane and write the geometrical isomerism u to e. So, first one is we need to explain what is the chlorination of methane. So, that mechanism you need to write. Here, there are three step mechanism will be there. The first step is chain initiation, chain propagation and chain termination. For writing this steps and along with the equation you will get a 3 marks and for the second question again it is 2 marks. I will go with the solution now. The initiation step where each chlorine molecule reacting with uh, it will absorb the sunlight and forms a 
chlorine free radical this is a chain initiation step in a second step that is in chain propagation the chlorine reacts with methane molecule and forms a methyl free radical along with the formation of hcl in the chain termination if you go through that you know this is a step where you are going to stop the reaction okay you can see that the chlorine chlorine molecules will be form a cl2 when this chlorine free radical reacts with the methane it will form a ch3cl and this ch3ch2 react to form a c2h6 this is how we can easily write the chlorinations of the methane mechanism by writing chain initiation chain propagation and chain termination process for all of this you need to write the reaction coming into the next question that we need to write the geometrical isomerism of a but to in okay but to in means it is one of the alkene where it consists of four carbon atom because it is a butene okay to the second carbon atoms you know the double bond will be there so this is a cis 2 butene and this is a trans 2 butene how do you write the cis and trans form we know that if the two methyl groups are present in the same side we say it is cis form if the two methyl groups are present in at the opposite end we say it is trans form you can write the cis and trans very easily by looking at with a example next coming into the last question that is give the three condition for aromaticity and how is ethane is prepared from the calcium carbide given example so this is a question from the hydrocarbon unit you need to say which are the conditions which is necessary for aromaticity which are the conditions we know that the molecule must be planar and it must should be cyclic and it must obey the huckel rule that is 4n plus 2 rule huckel rule must be obey it must be planar and it must be cyclic in nature coming into the second question how do you prepare ethane it is a alkyne by calcium carbide processes so here the calcium carbide which is allowed to treated with the water molecule to obtain calcium hydroxide with ethane okay this is a method for the preparations of ethane by calcium carbide by calcium carbide so in the question itself they have given to prepare the ethane from the calcium carbide only thing is you need to remember the water molecule and calcium hydroxide which is formed okay for writing the first question with the three different condition you'll get a three marks for second question again you'll get a two marks with a proper statement with one correct equation okay hope you are understood with the, all the patterns of the part a part b part c and part d how to answer with a precise answer so in the chemistry they won't go with the how much you have written page wise because in chemistry we see only the quality of the answer not with the quantity so please keep that in your mind and be focused what to write in the examination and it's very easy to score 70 on 70 on your chemistry all the best for your examination we'll meet up with the next session till that take care be safe thank you